Hello and welcome to episode 24 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Alvin. Alvin. <laughs> What's happening? A.K.A. Gorgon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gorgon. <sorry>. Gorgon. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have Alvin here. Uh, would you like to give yourself a little introduction? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Born and raised in SAC. Um, Currently have a full-time job again, which is awesome. Uh, I have three dogs, uh, Brutus, Leela, and Lady. One's a pit bull, one's a half-breed, a mutt, and one's a chihuahua. I'm currently with the longest relationship I've been in, Judy. She's going on past five years now, which is awesome. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And I have plenty of treasure to share, which... I've already started to, but we can go back over it. So, so are you gonna put a ring on it? Yeah. Oh shit! I'm gonna have to. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's why he went. This long, that's why know. he went treasure hunting today. So. <laughs> 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 we exactly. usually go up in like a, a week or two, so yeah. don't let her listen to this. Oh, well, we've already been talking about oh, wow. it, but she's already. Yeah, she she knows what's up. Nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, treasure hunting this week. It looks like you're the big winner this week. Uh, Brad and I uh, don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just been too... Well, I do have some treasure. I've, I've found the treasure of willpower and charisma. Hmm. I've been going to the gym twice a week. Or, I'm sorry, twice a day. Uh, one at once around 2 o'clock and once at 7. Do an hour of cardio and some weights. So, that's my treasure. Healthy lifestyle. Hmm. How much is that worth? <laughs> Priceless, wow. <laughs> or thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> uh, so, Alvan, what did you find? Uh, what didn't I find? Really, um, I didn't want to come into the show being unprepared, so I tried to see what I can come up with within a short time. I only had a couple of days where I could do it. Today was really good. Um, I had Wednesday off, which was pretty good. Um, I've been commuting back and forth to uh, San Francisco, where I work which has been pretty cool. Um, finally got the day off and then decided to just hit up all the local stores and stuff here in SAC. Went to Dimple, went to, where else? Thriftway, down off El Camino. Um, and just ran into a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of characters, that's for sure. <laughs> and the first thing I found was, let's see, Dragon Ball Z, which, I don't know if you are into those oh, I at love all. Those cards. <laughs> <laughs> but because I was listening to the podcast before, and I knew you guys were avid collectors of Dragon Ball Z cards, mm -hmm. so I was like, "That that might be worth it right there." And then some found some magic cards as well too, and then some other odds and ends that came with it. I think that was like a dollar ninety nine set for all that, and then. Today I scored big at Denio's with at least almost two complete decks of the 94-95 Fleer Marvel cards, plus some extra stuff that was in there, and there was quite a bit. There was Batman cards in there, there's some Conan, Barbarian in there, um, let's see what else. I found some basketball cards, some Kings cards and stuff in there too. Yeah, these Batman metal cards are sick. Yeah. They're all holographed and stuff. So. Yeah, you have a couple cool Venom cards in here too. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, it goes back and forth. There's um, predominantly all Marvel, but then there's like uh, Spider-Man, there's, uh, and then there's also like dual fights and everything as well too. Um, a lot of different, a lot of different stuff that I hadn't seen since I was a kid, and I remember getting them in like second, third grade, and my teacher would always take them away because everybody was like trading during class and stuff and and all that. Fucking bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I so. had a, a similar tale like that. I had brought a X Men comic book to class to fifth grade, yeah. and it wasn't even like the X Men. It was the X Men. Cartoon series comic book. Yeah. So uh, I had that and Ian Greco. I don't know if you, remember, you know Ian. Yeah. He was in my class and he took it out without me knowing from my desk and was reading it and got it taken away. Put it in the June box. Yeah, it did. 
Nice. I was able to get it back after class because the teacher knew that I wouldn't. I wasn't into that funny business. The teacher hated Ian. Oh, uh, every teacher hated that guy. He didn't have a chance. And a lot of what I found was just different random stuff. I dug out my old Nintendo. I was telling Nick about it, and I still got about 30 games or so. And it's, you know, basic run of your meal, you know, kind of set. Super Mario Brothers. I have Castlevania. I got Contra. A lot of that stuff. I was playing through them again just so I could try and be prepared on that end. And what I found more interesting was here's a, a game today like uh, PlayStation 2. It's called Smash Court Tennis Pro <laughs> Tournament. Nice. It's got all the pretty much greats in it. I mean, Andre Agassi, Pete Sampras, uh, Monica Sales, Anna Kornikova, Lindsay Davenport. And, I mean, it had everything with it. And I haven't played PlayStation in, in forever. Um, and also, too, I dug out the you know Nintendo. I found out that it wasn't working properly because of the the port one and the port two. I was playing Super Mario Brothers three, and it was having me switch back and forth. It would automatically select two player. Mm. <laughs> I only had the one. <laughs> and so I'm like trying to go back and forth, and I'm like I, I keep dying, but I got to go to Luigi now, and I got to go back. <laughs> so I decided to to kind of go see what I could find as far as a new system, and I wound up uh, getting a that's like a dual system setup, so you can play Nintendo and Super Nintendo on it. Yeah. Because I always wanted to play Super Nintendo, but I was always into like Sega. Mm -hmm. It was Sega Genesis as a kid and grew into that, but never had a chance to really delve into Super Nintendo. I mean, like Super Mario World and stuff like that was awesome, like Yoshi's Island and different stuff, but never really got the, the fullness of that. Uh, also, I found comic books today as well too. In addition, we've got... Oh, is that the killing joke? Yes. Yep. Oh, wow. That's the, have you seen that one, Nick? I have, yeah. I found that at Denial's too. Yeah. Got some Spider-Man too in here. Oh, you got some of the Secret Wars stuff when he's in black suit. Yeah. Not blackface, black suit. Black suit. <laughs> we've got like the conclusion. I got some X-Factor too that I found. Oh, that's tight. Those ones are, that's pretty cool. I haven't read those. How come, uh, you find hella good shit at Denial? <laughs> you know why? Because he probably went on Friday. And we always go on the weekends. Yeah, today's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to tell the audience that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I want this oh, idea. This, <laughs> this, well, this was actually in it as well, too. I didn't really... I thought it was a, a like a comic as well too, just like a cover. And I think the people that had it thought it was a cover too. But it's it's Paul McCartney in his own words. And I was looking at it, and it's actually pretty legit. Like there's a lot of black and white photos, and it's just him talking about different aspects of like you know the the whole history of the Beatles and uh -huh. then when they broke up, and you know it was in that whole pile too. So I got. The cards and all of that for like right around fifteen bucks. <laughs> Dang. So wow. it was, yeah, it was a really good score. I spent more, I think, on the game than I did <laughs> most of the book. I, I think I spent like two dollars on that. So, but was yeah. that at Denial's as well? Yes. All the stuff I got there, um, the the magic cards, the Dragon Ball Z, is the stuff I got at uh, at Thrift Town. Have you played this yet? No. I have not. You gotta let me know if it's as good as Virtua Tennis. <laughs> I doubt it. I was reading reviews about it, and they were saying it's not as clean, but it, uh, like, just being able to play with different people and kind of go back and forth has a lot of potential. So I like how they included Anna Kornikova as a world-class champion. <laughs> she's won a few, right? <laughs> I don't think she's ever won. She, she's definitely never won a major. <laughs> uh, she might have won, like, um... Like doubles, a doubles major, I don't know. But you, they don't really count those. Was she in Playboy? I don't know. Like one of them was. If there was one, it was probably her. Because, I mean, it's not fair to say that she's not good at tennis, because obviously she's, she's good at tennis. That's I mean, she was playing it with the best tennis players in the world, but she's just not at the top of the tennis world, that's all. <laughs> she never won a tournament. She was, she was probably ranked... 
to be right. 50 to 100, somewhere in the 50 to 100 rank. When She's not Serena. Or no, 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 sure. no way. <laughs> but she is fucking hot, though. Yeah. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias hit that. I uh, had it in the music video, too. <laughs> Did he have yeah, the music it. video of him hitting it, or was it, <laughs> or was she just in there? That, I think there was a scene where they were in the bathroom or something like that. Oh wow! It was pretty, uh, pretty erotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Titillating, to say the least. He was like getting some upskirt action on her and shit <laughs> while he was making out with her. Oh. Slut. <laughs> it's a nice score, all fan. Mm -hmm. That's that's tight. Yeah. So. uh... Did you take a picture of this Paul McCartney one? I did, yeah. <laughs> it's like a funny looking. It's like a comic book drawing of just his face. And then there's a real photo of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it looks like it's a comic book about Paul McCartney, but it's actually like like a uh, biography type thing in the, on the inside. I, I wonder if he was pretty cool. I wonder if he was into comics. That's why he did that. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I was the one that I liked the most out of the whole stack was the the Batman the because I've seen that the killing joke mm -hmm. yeah I've seen that quite a few times because they reissued it and then they added more stuff to it and I was like I oh, need to get it or you know but and then I found that and I was like okay this do is, you know what's the, what 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 happens in that book I've only heard I haven't had a chance to to read any of it yeah. no uh, so top five sure top five. Top five. Alvin, did you get a chance to uh, think of some top five action? Well, I did, but I nothing really came <laughs> to me at all because the the majority of the games and stuff that I play is more, you know, either racing or sports games or, or stuff. They don't really require to be under a spell. Yeah, <laughs> you know? so, yeah, not too many magic spells in that, yeah, that genre. Yeah, that's exactly. Like baseball simulators. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this uh, top five is the top five magic spells in video games. I uh, actually took some of Brad's tactics and thought of some conventional spells that I really liked. So um, we could go ahead and get started with Okay. I'll go first. Uh, my number five for top magic spells is Float from Final Fantasy II. This is one that Brad and I grind on so long. We got, killed so many enemies just once we got to the underworld. So we could use Float to get to the land of the summon monsters. That was one of our favorite parts where you could fight Leviathan and Ashura and gain their um, power. I don't think we actually grinded for Float. Why not? We grinded for Wall. I think we were grinding for float because you get that on 34. I th you get wall on a later level though, I thought. Because we could always get da heal our damage. Yeah. Well, I like float because it could get you through the land of the seven monsters without taking damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good number five. Yeah, I have the, at the bottom. I, my number five, I kind of stretched it a little bit. That's not, if I... If I really thought it was magic, I would probably put this number one, but it's kind of not magic. It's, it's actually more a form of ki, or chi as you will. You know what it is? The kamehameha? No, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the hadoken. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of magic. I mean, yeah. I'm, st I'm stressing it a little bit, but, uh, and of course I gave credit to Ken for throwing the hadoken oh, out. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean... It, you know, it's a very uh, iconic uh, attack, the Hadoken. Everyone knows what the Hadoken is. Um, but I was reading a little bit about it. It's basically a form of key that uh, either Ken or Ryu or, I guess, Akuma as well. They just ball up all their key and they shoot it at you and they yell, Hadoken! And it's just iconic. does shitload of damage. And it equalizes any sort of advantage that uh, their opponent might have. So that's why I listed it at number five. My number five is going to be a spell I took off of Lufia 2. It's going to be Valor. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the very few spells that actually brings someone back to life. Because if you guys played it, bringing someone back to life in that game is next to impossible. You've got uh, <laughs> Miracle. You've got... You can go back to the, the church or whatever. Yeah, and you go back to the back. church. Uh, this is and don't you isn't it based on your level when they bring him back so if you're on like level five it's five hundred or something like that like the higher the level the more money it is yeah well that's like most of the game about the shining force too but mm. 
uh, you find miracles, which is an item that could bring someone back to life. But Valor actually heals you completely and re resurrects all your people as well. When the fuck do I get that? Way later. <laughs> in the game. You can, I think you can get it in the ancient cave. You get it in the ancient cave, I, but you lose it when you get out. Oh, this game. Yeah. yeah, Valor is a, a really tight spell. I think you have to buy your spells in Lufia. Yeah. So it costs like three hundred thousand dollars or something, but it's worth every penny. Yeah, that's that'd be nice to have. See, when I first started playing the game, you know, I. I I'm used to Final Fantasy where if you die, there's like a phoenix down or a life or something like that. That's pretty elementary, but yeah, I'm, I'm finding that out quickly that it's hard to come by. <laughs> so I used a miracle. I, I'm pretty sure I should be hoarding miracles for like emergency situations. Are, 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 are the items that are sold in shops or anything like that? No. So they're just kind of like rare items, right? Yeah. I think there might be one item that brings you back to life with a hundred hit points okay and then there's miracle that just heals everything yeah i'm, I'm gonna have to start hoarding those then because i wasted one early in the game just figuring that i was going to come by them all the time yeah it's a miracle to find one I, yeah the name <laughs> kind of says it but you know i'm used to the final fantasy games i'm catching up though uh my number four is teleport beta from earthbound uh <laughs> That's tight. Yeah, because in order to get around in that game, you walk really slow. You don't have any sprint shoes in this game. And to get through to different towns, you have to teleport. But if you use teleport alpha, you have to run for a, a period of time and hope you don't hit anything. Because if you run and hit into a wall, you have to start all over. So you have to like zigzag throughout the town until you teleport. But teleport beta, you go around in a circle. Like a spiral. Yeah, which is less uh, likely to get hit by anything. Very conventional. So when you say conventional, you mean like it's used in game to to complete tasks. It's not something that's gonna kick some monster ass. That's what you mean by conventional. Or do you mean convenience? Both. Because <laughs> 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 you said a lot of your spells were conventional. I was trying to figure out what you meant by that, but I think I'm picking up on it. <laughs> Uh, my f number four is from Final Fantasy VI. I'm going to give Terra credit for this one because she was the most powerful uh, wizard in that game. Uh, it's Ultima. Ultima's learned from the Ragnarok Esper. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really cool, really cool spell. It's actually in a lot of the different Final Fantasy games, but Final Fantasy VI is one of my favorites, so I'm going to give Final Fantasy VI credit. I believe. It, it might have showed up in like Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 5 or something like that, but I didn't play those ones, so I'm just going to give it Final Fantasy 6 the credit for uh, being the, the first one that was introduced, how it was introduced to most players anyway. Um, it's got this big, large, blue shape that expands and expands until it finally explodes and it just kicks some serious monster ass. It's got these little green streaks in it, it makes this really cool sound as it's going off, it's it's almost like a buzzing sound that just keeps increasing until it finally explodes. It's really cool. Um, you don't get it until late in the game. It's one of the most, in fact, it is the most powerful spell that's in that game. What's kind of weird is that if you go into the dinosaur for forest in the world of Rune, the uh, the Brachiosaur has that yeah. spell. It's, <laughs> and the Brachiosaur is like one of the, mo the strongest monsters. It probably is the strongest monster that you'll just run into in a random battle. Uh, but for whatever reason, a, a dinosaur has that spell that... So that's that's my number four. My number four, I'm taking from. Uh, it's the uh, the tech deck guide. Sorry, the it's just, it's just it's a Rasta character. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sorry, that's okay. My number four, I'm taking from Breath of Fire Two. It's going to be the Chop Chop spell. Um, it's learned in the Fat Cat uh, Kitchen. It's very rare to get or very hard to get. Once you do get it, it could kill one of the hardest enemies in the game in one hit, which gives you 13,000 experience points, which is a lot in that game. Uh, it kills a giant mutant fly in one hit uh, because they're used, when you attack them, it takes away one hit point, but for some reason that chop chop spell just kills them. So that's why I put that down on my number four. Number three on my list comes from my top NES game of all time. Do you remember what it was? I don't. Your top NES game? Yeah. Highlight? <laughs> no. Zelda II, The Adventure of the Oh, that's right. <laughs> the fairy spell. <laughs> <laughs> that was my honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once Link acquires this spell, he turns himself into a fairy, 
And you could bypass all the monsters on a screen and even fly through <laughs> keyholes. <laughs> there is one downside to this spell. That's why I didn't make my list. Yeah. Is if they they have those um, the pits in the last level that you could just fly across. But when you get to the end, it's a brick wall, so you have to cut through it. Yeah. That's so they true. kind of made it very safe. Yeah. <laughs> very safe. <laughs> so you had to go back and do it as Link. That'd be cool if the fairy could shoot fireballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, my number three is from the game Ogre Battle. Uh, it's a spell that's cast by my favorite class, the Lich. Yes. I think the Sorcerer actually has this ability as well, but it's called Firewall. Yes. So the uh, the Liches have basic, three basic uh, spells that they use. There's an Acid Attack, there's an Ice Storm Attack. Oh, there, there's actually a uh, fourth one. So they have Acid, Ice Storm, and Phantom. They all do uh, a ton of damage to all, all of the opposition. So, any, you know, if there's five of them, it's going to do, do, do damage to all five. But my favorite one of, uh, of all the Lich's spells was the Firewall. Again, it, it has a lot to do with the sound that it makes. I'm, I guess I'm just a audio type of guy. But uh, it, it's like, it sounds like it's like fire creeping across the field, which essentially is what it is. It's like, it's like a rumbling type of sound. And after it's... I mean, you can literally see, like large fire flame just blazing across the screen and it just rips right through the opposition and kicks a major ass. So that's my uh, number three, the the firewall by the Lich. So with Ogre Battle, does he use a spell at random or it depends on your placement? I, I th it depends think it's random. Yeah, I think it depends on who you're fighting. Because I find myself when I'm fighting against knights, he'll use Nightmare. When I'm fighting against... It depends on who, what magic he... Like if he hits a fighter... He'll use bolt on it, or if he fights another wizard, he'll use tornado. Okay. So Brad, Brad is wizard. referring to the wizard, not the lich. Yes, the wizard. Because <laughs> I have wizards right now. I don't have a lich yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lich has come pretty pretty late yeah. in the game. I think it's wizard, then mage, then sorcerer, then lich. Yeah. And in order to get the lich, you have to get like the undead ring or something like the that. The undead ring. Yeah. You use an undead ring on a sorcerer, you get a lich. And I think their alignment has to be between like two and nine or something. Oh, that's no problem. Yeah. You use <laughs> the alignment. It's an undead staff. Maybe it's an undead staff. That sounds right. Yeah. It's the ring, I think. The undead ring. Because I you, don't remember. You give, um, there's this dude in the second level who wants the Book of the Dead. And if you find it, he'll give you an undead ring. Mm. Oh, okay. So you have the undead ring? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> that comes really yeah. late in the game. Oh. I found a pumpkin plus, though. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are gay. Yeah. <laughs> Those are, like, when they attack, I think all they do is cut down half the end or half, yeah. half the, uh, the hit points, yeah. right? Those are cool attacks when they land, but it's only cool if, like, they have a ton of hit points. I mean, if they have two hit points, it's going to take down one hit point. That's what yeah. sucks about it. Yeah. My number three is going to be a plasmid from Bioshock. It's going to be the security bot plasmid. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, when you throw throw that on a big daddy, you could go get a security bot who's actually trying to kill you, and it'll go and kill the big daddy and say it or whoever you throw it on. And that made beating it on the hardest difficulty very easy. So that's why I, use, I picked that one. Is that the red or the green apple? Apple. Yeah. I don't think it's an apple. Because when when you when you're holding it, it looks like an apple. Oh, like I thought it looks like a tomato. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a blue tomato. Oh, okay, it's blue. Blue tomatoes. There's the blue and Bioshock is what I I like the first one and the second mm -hmm. one. The second one's really cool. The third one I played it was to Rapture and everything. That one's pretty freaky. Yeah. Well, to the the. Um, Columbia or whatever. Yeah, they they offer kind of one like that, similar to where. Um, he gets in there, and then you have to square off against the like the ringleader. You get up to him, and then he, um, they, I believe it's a um, like a fire kind of spell that they give him because you can you can then use it amongst the crowd because they'll they they turn against you basically if you choose. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's a, um, there's two victims on stage. Oh yeah, yeah, the couple. Yeah. yeah, and if you choose to like. Like you know, throw a ball or something at this this guy, then it the crowd will turn on you, and then that's when you can utilize that yeah. kind of thing. But yeah, yeah that's yeah. <laughs> uh, number two, Soul Steel from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Nice. Uh, not only does it take, uh, not only does it heal you, 
but it takes damage to the enemy and that was probably the most used spell that we used when playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night um, and it's cool for all the Alucard spell they were uh, kind of like Street Fighter moves you had to push like down forward and punch to do like a fireball or down back down toward or whatever to do soul steal or it's like a half circle and then back or something and it was pretty cool it uh, killed the enemy and gave you life all right my number two is from final fantasy 4 my probably my favorite video game of all time really it's definitely it's one it's my favorite video game on snes which snes is my favorite console so i'm guessing it's my favorite video game of all time um it's one of the summons that Rydia has hers uh, this one is the bahamut mm -hmm. Uh, Bahamut's the king of the Eidolons. The, those are the monsters that Rydia summons in the game. Um, you have to beat Bahamut before he will uh, lend you his services. He, he, he can be found on his cave, which is uh, found on the moon. So basically after you meet with Fusoya, you can go kick some Bahamut ass. Um, it's really fucking cool. I mean, Bahamut's a fucking dragon who fucking blows breathes fire so it doesn't really get much cooler than that you can call on a dragon to defeat your enemies his uh the attack that he does it doesn't really say anything when you're using it but when you're fighting him it says it's mega nuke yeah <laughs> so i mean that you're calling a dragon to use an attack called mega nuke on your on your enemy so it takes up like 60 magic points which is the most of any of the uh the idolins that uh Rydia summons so that's my number two it's the Probably my favorite summon of all of them. Cool. My number two is going to be also from Final Fantasy IV. It's going to be Mateo. Nice. Oh, that's my number one. Kills Tella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mateo is an awesome spell. Uh, it costs 99 hip uh, magic points to use. Tella only has 98 magic points, so he <laughs> sacrifices himself <laughs> to, to kill Golbez. <laughs> Heck of fails too. <laughs> and it's funny that one that difference in one's magic point takes your life. <laughs> you think you just like lose feeling in an arm or something. <laughs> no, yeah. Um it, that one magic point, yeah, and it's it, it does kill him for a second, it, it ends the battle, but he just comes right back to life. It doesn't kill him for sure. And then uh Fusoya and Golbez go use W Mateo on the final boss. We all know it's called Meteor, but because they were only able to put five slots in a magic spell on Final Fantasy II, it was called Mateo, which is what I still call it to this day. So that's my number two. It's funny how we pronounce things differently. I always said Mateo. Oh, really? Yeah, it's interesting. That's, a, that's like a Spanish Matthew. <laughs> Speaking of that, I, I was looking, uh, when I was doing my research for this, I was looking at Rubicant. Yeah. We were talking about whether or not he was Spanish. Of course, he wears a sombrero, so he's obviously Spanish. <laughs> With Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think the name's actually supposed to be pronounced Rubicante. Yeah. I think that's actually how it's supposed to be pronounced, because there is an E after the T, which doesn't make sense. With the N-T-E, A-N-T-E, you would pronounce that E. I think it's very, very likely that he actually is a Spanish character. I, um, when I was playing through Final Fantasy IV on DS... Oh, he must eat a lot of chili peppers... Probably. But he's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, they, they said Rubicante, and I was like, did they just say Rubicante? But then they didn't say it again, so I wasn't sure. Huh. So, um, yeah, and he's got, like, little flames on his cape and stuff, and he looks like a matador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, my number one was Mateo. Uh, probably just uh, the best magic spell in Final, <clears throat> Final Fantasy II. Uh, besides Nuke, Nuke is pretty cool, but I put Mateo on there because it was a magic spell we always wanted to see and never saw it because it was always blacked out when you ever tried to use it. <laughs> and then when you finally use it, like, oh, that's heck of tight. Look at all those meteors we never put. Look at all those Mateos. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my number one. Oh, I, I'm sorry, but you guys are both wrong. The best uh, spell from Final Fantasy IV was used by the White Mage. 
Rosa, uh, <laughs> the namesake for my daughter. <laughs> the only white magic spell that could be used to inflict damage, it was simply referred to as white. <laughs> in, la in later games, it, it became known as holy. Uh, in fact, I think that's actually how it was supposed to be translated from Jet Japan, but there was, I guess, philosophical reasons why they didn't want to use holy as mm -hmm. a magic spell. So anyway, that, that's my favorite one. I, I actually... I really did, even at the time, I always liked using this spell just because it did so much damage. It, it didn't take a ton of uh, magic points to use. And like later in the game, which is when you acquire this spell, um, most of the the monsters that you're fighting are like purely black evil. Yeah. And the white spell just does a ton of damage to it. It's it's a cool looking spell too. It, and again, it makes it just... Something about sounds just does it for me. There, there's like this... like It almost sounds like... Um, a bell jingling or something like that as the, these white pearls go across the screen and they, they come from the right and the left sides of the screen they meet in the middle and as they meet they, they, just, they just rain down on your opposition it looks really cool it makes a cool sound as it does it and it, like I said it just does so much damage for as many magic points that you have to use to use it and I always liked it also because it was like the only one that any white mage could use to uh, to attack the opposition so that's my number one speaking of controversial magic names Nuke. I know, I was kind of thinking that too. <laughs> like nuking Japan. Right. <laughs> but I guess it's supposed to be Flare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, it, you're right, but it is interesting in, the, in Final Fantasy 2, the American version of Final Fantasy 2, the, they chose to translate it as Nuke, <laughs> as Mega Nuke. Yeah. And then there was a Nuke, there was actually a Nuke spell mm -hmm. also, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one looked kind of cool too. Yeah. So my number one is going to be the most convenient spell in Final Fantasy history. It's going to be Haste. Nice. Oh, I had that. I had an honorable mention. Uh, haste, uh, very great spell. It speeds your character up. Uh, there's relics in Final Fantasy III, Final Fantasy VI that you could put on, which actually gives you auto haste, so you don't have to waste a spell on it. But it just makes your character's uh, wait time be lessened. And also has the greatest... Uh, quip of all time haste makes waste of course in life haste makes waste when you do something when you try to rush to do an assignment when you try to do your job hastily you're going to make mistakes but haste makes waste except in Final Fantasy <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's uh, I saw that on a message board and I was like I'm going to start saying that of course my co-workers don't know what I'm talking about but, some do. <laughs> but that was my number one nice we used to say that too when we were little haste makes waste and piss each other off <laughs> It's interesting because in those Final Fantasy games, I, I tended not to use the uh, the black magic uh, spells very often unless I was like on a really really difficult boss, just because it was so difficult to uh, get magic points back. Um, you know, ethers are usually pretty expensive early in the game, and you're, you're not always close to a uh, to an inn or someplace where you could rest your party. So I wouldn't use black magic spells very often. But what I would do is my you know, my fighters, the guys that swung the swords and the axes and, and whatnot, I would use haste on them so that I could get more attacks in, and the haste didn't really use very much hit, uh, magic points. Yeah. So that was my way of kind of balancing it out, not using too much magic points, but, you know, delivering a lot of damage to the to the monsters. Maybe next week we could have, um, or next time we record, we could do worst spells. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a few ideas for that. That could Dave. be fun. <laughs> Let's not spoil it. <laughs> well, really, <laughs> so some of the uh, basically all my honorable mentions came from Zelda Two, <laughs> like Fairy. Yeah. Jump, jump! I used a lot, but Fairy you didn't really use all. That, at least I didn't use all that often. There were only a couple of times where like you'd want to, you know, go over a big pit or something like that, or. Like there was that one stage where you were uh, constantly falling from the sky and you had to try to find a platform to land on until you actually figured out where you needed to be. You could always just you know press start and switch to fairy and you'd be fine. Uh, but there's also a spell called spell. Yeah. <laughs> that spell was not very effective. It was like used to like find a town or something like that and maybe a secret or two in the game. Yeah. But other than that, it just turned monsters into like those blob looking things I think. Yeah, the little it, blue stone thingies. Right, and it took I think it took a lot of uh, magic too. Yeah, it did. 
So that's definitely not going to be on my list next week. <laughs> Unless it is. Game of the week. Oh, I failed. <laughs> I've been too busy to play too many games. In fact, I haven't played uh, at all, to be honest with you. So I failed. I apologize to the listeners. And uh, really, I, I apologize to myself because I'm depriving myself of a ton of, of good games. So my bad. I, I semi-failed as well. <laughs> as you heard on the last podcast, I had to start over because I didn't get Canopus. Uh, I would. I made it to level three again after like two or three hours. Uh, didn't get Canopus again, so I have to play the level over. So uh, I'm just gonna find out how to do it online, and then I'll be able to just report back and say I finally got Canopus. You got your dragons. I got my dragons. So I've played uh, quite a few hours of Tales of Destiny. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Here's story time with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up your blankets. Go in and get tucked hot in. Yeah, get your hot cocoa and marshmallows. <laughs> Turn the heater up a little bit. <laughs> Ladies, get your vibrators. Like oh, gross. <laughs> Lady, I think you're the only one female listener. When <laughs> <laughs> hey, we become famous, oh, they, they could listen. They okay. could listen back. <laughs> um, Reese Witherspoon will be all like grabbing for her rabbit toy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, last I left you, um, I was confronted by Leon, a general of the command. Uh, remember I told you I went to the underground and three com- three generals attacked me? With me. Yeah. Well, I beat them up and then went back to the town and stayed at the inn, and all of a sudden I woke up to find eight enemies outside of the inn getting ready to attack, to attack me. So, of course, I fight them and bring them down. Then I- Leon attacks me. This guy's such a punk. I'm supposed to lose on him. He takes away all my life instantly with all his attacks. Uh, he captures me and takes me to uh, his capital city, uh, Darn Shield. Uh, I'm sitting in jail. Uh, they go ahead and uh, bring me in front of the king, uh, and they want to execute me. But this guy named Hugo runs in and says, no, these guys could be of good use. Uh, there's something going on with the temple up north. Let's have them investigate. We don't want to waste our army. So they could go ahead and go in, in their stead. Leon doesn't trust me, so he joins my party. I hated fighting with that guy because he just killed me. So uh, he puts these electric devices on my head, and if I try to escape the town, I die. Or, <laughs> or like if I escape, and I try to run away from him, they, he flips a switch and I die. Oh, man. Yeah, it sucks. House arrest. <laughs> yeah, basically, he puts them on all my characters, myself, Rudy, and Mary. So, uh, we go up to the temple. Uh, we find out that the Eye of Adamoni, which is like the doomsday device, has been stolen. And this girl named Philia was turned to stone. Uh, she gets healed by a Sordian, uh, Dimlos. He heals her. And she comes to life and says that the high priest Lydon took the eye of Adamoni and is going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the eye of Adamoni, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I, I leave the temple and. Basically, I don't know where to go. I had to find clues to find out where this Eye of Adamoni went. <laughs> uh, so, after talking, like, three hours, I went through back through all the towns, and I found this sailor who said, oh, they took a ship to the west. So then that, I take get that info back to the king, and he says, well, you have to go west. <laughs> so, so we board the ship, and all of a sudden, the clouds turn black and the sky gray. I'm like, oh man, what's happening? All of a sudden we're attacked by a sea monster. Oh, it's shit. A, a sea dragon. I'm like, fine, I get to fight my first real boss. Leviathan? Oh man. So I get up to the sea lion, the sea dragon, and Philia, who joined my party, she said, oh, he wants us to get on his back. <laughs> <laughs> so we climb on the sea lion's back, and he takes us to an underground It's a sea, sea lion? Or a sea dragon. <laughs> 
<laughs> to the land of Otherly. <laughs> so he takes us to this underground uh, city. It's a uh, basically work way through the city and find another Swordian for Philia. His name is Clemente, and he tells you that. <laughs> <laughs> He tells you that um, the Eye of Adamoni must be found and if not destroyed. So like, all right, so we, we continue our, our journey west. We come to Cherrick Harbor. Everyone there's a dick. Like when you talk to the <laughs> when you talk to the um, people, the the merchants, and you don't like you look through their items and don't buy anything. They're like, why do you even bother looking at my items? <laughs> So I purposely did not buy anything from any of them, even though I needed some of their armor. <laughs> and you could only have four people fight with you in the... That showed those NPCs. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get any of my gold. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you could only fight with four people. So right then I took Leon out when Philia joined me. So it's me and the three girls, even though they're pretty weak. I was like, I'm not fighting with Leon. So uh, we find out that in this temple, the Eye, Temple of Cherik, uh, the Eye is supposed to be in there. So we sneak in at night, kill a bunch of priests, <laughs> and uh, find out that the Eye has been moved again, this time to uh, Fitzgold. Go back to the ship, and we sail to Fitzgold. Uh, in Fitzgold, their pirate ships are attacking this the harp the the merchant ships. So before we could even start looking for the eye, they want us to take out these pirates. So Leon comes up with a stupid plan. Mm -hmm. He says, "Let's uh, disguise our ship like a merchant ship, and they'll attack us, and then we could take out the leaders." For some unknown reason, the plan works. The four, <laughs> there's four pirate ships I have to go throughout and find the four different commanders and take them out. This is where shit gets real. Oh, man. Um, I get to the fourth ship, and uh, there's this guy named Bautista. He's a priest uh, who follows Leiden, who, has, who we find out has the eye of Adamoni. Uh, he says, if I take him out, he'll tell me where Leiden is. This guy turned in his priest staff for a pair of Wolverine claws because he jacked me up. Like, oh, as soon man. as the battle started, he has two priests with him and two warriors. And they destroyed my party. I'm like, that's insane. So my second fight, I just went straight for him. Uh, I was able to take him out. And uh, so I said, where's Leiden? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Who's oh, Leiden? Man. So uh, we take him back to uh, Fitzgald and take him to this little uh, house where no one's at. And Leon takes off the... Um, the electro circuit in Mary's head and puts it on the uh, on Bautista and he's about to torture him so that's where I stopped was when he was about to torture Bautista so would you consider that a major battle with Bautista yeah that guy was tight so he, that would be your first major battle yeah my first boss battle he had these claws and he just jacked me up I thought, oh, so he actually had claws yeah I thought you were talking <laughs> metaphorically no he had some claws on his on his wrists <laughs> Jacked me up. Like Sigma from Mega Man. X2. Yeah, yeah, nice. basically. Do you fight a lot of random battles in that game? You do. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And it's cool on the pirate ship. You could actually see the enemies running around, so you could avoid them. But they run hecka fast. So if you two meet, you could like push up, and then you'll like avoid them, and then they'll follow you. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of random battles. And is every battle like the side scrolling mm -hmm. thing, like Tales of Fantasia? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. It, it makes it fun. I have a bunch of spells and different tactics. What do you mean a side-scrolling battle? It's like um, you're fl you're fighting on a Street Fighter Two. Oh, okay. With these characters, right? And there's like enemies, and you fight like with your swords and stuff, kind of like. So it's not turn-based. No. Oh. Yeah, you you're, you control Stan, the main character, and the three people behind you. Uh, you make programming like, yeah. to do different stuff. And so, like, what I'll do is I'll use a move that jumps over the enemies and then um, fight that way, and then the other three could fight whoever. No, no. Oh, wow. You want to talk about anything other than any stories? Any? Well, 
I was thinking, I was looking over here, I don't know, is this the, uh, is this the heroin spoon? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, remember, <laughs> I, remember that. I thought that was hilarious. Um, the, the segment when you guys talked about gold dust on uh, Howard Stern, too. I was crossing the Bay Bridge during that, and I just couldn't stop laughing. And I was going through the going through the toll because they have a toll booth, and then they have another booth after that. Uh-huh. And just pe- oh man, <laughs> he's, he's become a major character in WWE now. Oh, has he? Yeah. He, oh man, he fought at the most recent pay per view. It was uh, Battleground. Yeah. And the the deal was that if he it was him and his brother and his father. Uh, his brother's name Cody Rhodes and his father's name Dusty Rhodes. Yeah. If they won this match against this ta- uh, tag Rhodes. team <laughs> match, yeah. they were named the, the Shield. If they won, they would they would all get. Well, Dusty Rhodes already has a contract, but <laughs> Cody Rhodes and uh, Goldust would get contract with WWE, and they ended up winning, so they're back in the WWE now. <laughs> and Goldust looks heck of tight oh, yeah. with his dark mall makeup. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was heck of funny. Do you hear? Do you see that all, man? I have not. Oh, uh, on the uh, live pay per view event that just happened, Battleground. Yeah. They're doing a promo with the Rhodes and Dusty. Yeah. And so they're talking to Cody, and Goldust goes, (laughs) 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 and the microphone, and Dusty Rhodes just starts busting (laughs) up. He's laughing. He can't control himself. Great. It was in the middle of like Cody Rhodes was doing speaking with the with the interviewer, some blonde broad. And he was he was doing his monologue about oh our our job our life is on the line you know no one respects our family we we don't have the perfect family but you know we love each other yeah and then right after that you know Goldust does this thing it's fucking the timing of it was perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a cool character Goldust but yeah other than that no I I wrote you guys a theme song I was messing around with yeah that's tight dude. that was hilarious. Um, I thought it was because I was thinking of like the Howard Stern show and like how they have Fred on there that does a lot of the the sound the extra so. yeah like yeah. the added this and that and I was like oh, that would be that would be cool to do that and I just got down to messing around on I think I recorded all that stuff on my phone oh, really? and then just put it in the computer and just morphed it together and Jeez. stuff which was cool yeah but you can plug your guitar into your phone or you're saying you recorded no I use the app that's on the phone like the there's a microphone app oh, yeah? that you just record and instead of putting it like against the the speaker because sometimes it gets really loud uh-huh. i put a sock over it to muffle it and then <laughs> just laid the the basic it had like a drum track on the system itself on the computer so i laid like a i don't know like a like a two minute bar just regular thing laid the rhythm track down and then did the lead part over it but i i wanted to do it better because I figured it could match more of like a, you know, video game kind of esque ness right. to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be on episode 22, but that episode got botched. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last episode. The last episode. Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, that will for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. Nick. Oh, bam. Happy hunting. Oh, and uh, stay tuned next week for the video game or uh, trivia it's challenge. A, well, we're, it's not even trivia. It's still to be announced. Oh, man. I'm going to shock the world. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, guys. Happy hunting. <laughs>